Hi, Cubberly Potters. I'm Mrs. Tracy, and today we're making um, creatures with clay together. Um, these are called thumb creatures. Here's a couple of examples. This is an owl. This is a penguin, and this is an eagle. And they're called thumb creatures because we're going to be building them on our thumbs, like this. You can see that this owl is completely hollow because we're going to build it on our thumb. And it's really important that it's hollow because if it's not hollow, there's a very good chance that it's going to explode in the kiln when I fire it. All right? So it's super important that you follow the instructions on um, the thickness of the clay, which I'm going to tell you about right now. All right, let me move these guys for just a second so you can see. All right, so each of you guys has a block of clay that's roughly this size. Okay? That means about the size in your palm. It sits like this. Okay? So the first step we're going to do is we're going to roll it a little bit on our work surface to get off, you know, get rid of some of the hard angled edges of the, of the cube. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect at this point because we're going to have a little lot. All right. And I'm slamming it on the work surface just to give it a nice um, flat edge so that when you're finished with it and it gets fired, it will sit flat on a table and it won't topple over. All right, so gentle tap. I'm going to take the thumb of one of your hands, probably your non-dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to use my right hand. So I'm going to shove my thumb up into my clay, but not all the way through. All right. Now, it sits like this. You can see. All right. So we want to make sure to make the shape of our beast by starting to squeeze around your thumb. You can see like that. But what we need to make sure also is that the walls of your animal are no thicker than a pencil. All right. So right now I'm a little bit too thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb back into the body of the beast and I'm going to start pinching it and turning it in my hands just to start thinning out the walls. Okay. Now we're, now we're cooking. Now the other thing, now it's starting to get a little bit uneven, so I'm going to give it another tap so my little guy will sit straight. And the other thing you need to make sure of, not only are the walls around the circle where your thumb goes supposed to be about the, the thickness of a pencil, but also the top. So that means the wall where your thumb hits the ceiling of the clay and the top right here. So. If it feels too thick, thicker than a pencil, thin it out by shoving your thumb up there farther, okay? Because we don't want the clay to explode after you've made this beautiful piece and it fires in the kiln. All right. So here's my start. Here's what I'm starting with. All right. Now, everything that we do to the clay today, we're just going to be pulling and pinching the clay. We're not going to be adding things to the clay. That means like, we're not going to be adding eyeballs or noses or ears. We're going to be pulling those elements out and, and using a number of tools from your home to make some of those features on your animal. Okay, so I'm going to work from the top of my beast down and show you a couple different things that you can do to make ears, noses, eyes, etc. All right, so let's start with some ears. Now, you can see that this little guy, owls don't really have ears, but they have horns, I guess. So all I did to make these um, horns was I started from the top and I pinched. Now, initially that ear is gonna look a little bit like bear ear. And if you'd like to make a bear, that's absolutely fine. Now it looks a little bit like a bear because the ears are round. Right? Now, another thing that you may want to have with you when you're working is a small dish of water. You're not going to want to use too much water, so every time you feel like your clay is getting a little bit dry, only use a fingertip of water. All right? I'm going to smooth out those edges, and you have the beginning of a grizzly bear, a cubberly cub, a koala, etc. Right? Now, if you want to make um, some your ears a little bit different like these horns you can start to pinch the tips right to make them slightly more pointy all right now what does that look like 
the beginning of a fox ear maybe. Now, it's getting a little bit dry, so I'm just gonna wet my finger a little bit to get rid of some of those lines. All right, and if you would like horns, you just keep pinching the tip there until it's super pointy, right? But let's give him one pointy ear and one round ear for now. All right, moving down the face. All right, we're gonna do a nose next, just so we have a, a, a fixed point for us to position our eyes around, all right? So it already has started to shape the um, center of the face by me pinching the ears out. So I'm just gonna keep pinching this small area between um, the two ears and pull the nose out that way. And if it starts to crack, hit it with some water. All right. Now, Animals all have a variety of different no shaped noses, right? So here's one that looks a little bit like a, could still be a fox or a cat, but we can also smush it and shape it into a snout. Give it a couple of nostrils. And you have the beginning of a pig, right? So what you do with your nose determines a lot of what your animal is gonna look like. Okay, now I have a pretty clear space to make some eyes. All right, so I used a pencil. I know you guys all have those at home. I also have a highlighter, which makes a cool design. It's how I made the eyes on this owl as stamped into the clay with the base of the highlighter. You ready? Now these are gonna make kind of these big, cutesy eyes. I'm gonna clean up the line a little bit just so it's a little bit deeper. And that's what it looks like, right? When it comes off of the clay. Now it's pretty cute, but maybe you wanna add a pupil, right? So all you need is your pencil, to add a pupil in the middle to give it a little more character and definition. Now, I'm not really sure what this animal is, but he has two eyes and one pointy ear, one round ear, and a pig snout, all right? Now, here's another thing that we can do. Arms or wings. So you'll notice that this owl has wings on the side of him. I know you guys all have scissors at home. They don't have to be handheld scissors. They can be kitchen strainers as well. So what I'm gonna do is from the side here, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna go and snip all the way until my scissors are closed. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I started here and went all the way till they were closed. And this sort of makes an arm. Now this arm, depending on how you shape it, can be a, a wing, like a different owl, or it could be a fin for a dolphin, or, you know, if, if your animal is a pig, you could snip off this little bit right here, and now it's an arm, or a hoof, right? Just depends on what you do with it after you snipped it, how you shape it. And I'm just smoothing it out so that we get rid of some of these little cracks. All right, here's another uh, trick that you can do. This is a marker. I'm gonna use it just like I did with the highlighter as a, as a stamping utensil, all right? This side right here, it's the cap. So it's what I used to make the feathers, the scalloped sort of crescent moon stamping on the owl. Now this can be feathers for a bird or it could be I think it looks a lot like fish scales as well. So if you're gonna do a fish, or yeah, or a reptile is a good one, or a dinosaur, I don't know if they have scales, but, or a snake. It's up to you what you do. I'm just trying to show you some of the tools that you have at home that you could, that can make texture and pattern. All right, so you can see the scallops on that. Scallop is another word for a crescent moon, shape like this. All right. 
let me see what else can I show you texture wise you guys all have these at home it's a fork now if I wanted to put texture for example on the arm a fork tong the the tongs on a fork will make even lines across your clay in a pattern maybe you want to go one direction and then flip it and go another to make check marks But really, you can do whatever you want. You have lots of different choices because you have a number of different things that you can uh, make texture with at home. So I used marker cap. I used a highlighter, fork. I also have a toothpick, which you may have at home. Paper clips are also really good for lines and drawing on your animal. And then another thing that is you may not think of is on the end of your pencil, if you have a nice, soft, um, used eraser that has a rounded edge, you can start to, see I've got some lines here, you can start to erase these lines because the eraser on your pencil can work as a smoothing tool. All right, so my last thing that I wanna tell you about that's super important is that you put your name on it. So you're gonna also use your pencil to write your name on the back of your animal. So if you could, as best you can, leave a space on your animal's back that doesn't have texture on it, it's just a blank slate, and you or mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever's with you this week, um, if you could make sure that the name is super legible on the back, I'm gonna write Jordan is my first name, Tracy, and that way, your beautiful beast will make its way back to you and come to live at your house once it fires in the kiln. All right, if you have any questions about how to do this or any um, thing that you want to comment on about this project, do it in the comments below on the YouTube link and I'll get back to you. Okay, bye.